Hello. Today we're going to talk about gendered movement. You might have seen that Apple HomePod ad about the woman who unwinds back at her apartment after a long day at work. It was directed by Spike Jones, he of Being John Malkovich and Her fame, and follows on from two previous music videos he made for the Kenzo Perfume and Fatboy Slim's Weapon of Choice. All three were considered bizarre and eye-catching when they were first released, but have been endlessly imitated since. So much so that Taylor Swift was accused of plagiarism of the Ikenzo ad when people noticed a lot of, er, uh, similarities in her own music video for her single, Delicate. The impact of these videos is not purely stylistic, however, and, I believe, has informed, to some degree, the recent glut of action movies with female protagonists. How? Well, it's because Spike Jones made space for women. To understand the what, the why, and the how of that statement, we need to understand something about the history of gendered movement. You may have heard the phrase, throw like a girl at some point in your life. Depending when you heard it and who said it, it might mean entirely different things each time. Another man saying it to me would be an insult. At least, it was when I was younger. The implication of this phrase being that women can't throw and neither can you. This conveniently ignores the various record-breaking women shot-putters, discus throwers, javelin throwers, basketball teams, and so on. The irony of this statement is that I wish I could throw like those women. As such, the phrase has come full circle today, where the feminine hygiene brand always uses the phrase, like a girl, as their promotional slogan, highlighting and contradicting this ill-informed perception of physical imbalance. This can easily be perceived as progressive, and is certainly a step up from its usage in the past, but as H Bomber Guy pointed out in one of his videos, always is still a brand, and it is still a cynical marketing ploy. So why was this phrase a pejorative, and how did it change to being positive enough to sell sanitary products? Enter Miss Iris Marion Young. Young was an American political and feminist theorist, who taught at the University of Chicago, who sadly passed away in 2006. In 1980, she wrote an essay entitled Throwing Like a Girl, with the subtitle A Phenomenology of Feminine Body Comportment, Motility and Spatiality. In the essay, she looks at perceptions of the female body and how the perception informs performance and confidence. Significantly, it's not the other way around, that performance and confidence inform the perception of women's abilities. Citing studies by phenomenologist Erwin Strauss, that showed boys took up more physical space and expend more energy when throwing a ball than girls, Young disagrees with Strauss's conclusion that this was due to biology, believing that this was in fact due to the different understandings of comportment by girls, i.e. how they should throw the ball. Young argues that women are conditioned to operate in physically lesser ways due to the social expectations of what femininity is and what motions it requires to operate. She posits that the feminine body is constrained by these perceptions and must transcend them as part of a wider effort for equality. This is a very brief summary of the essay, and I would encourage you all to read it in full. The link is in the description. The part we are most interested in is towards the end of the essay, when she talks about how women inhabit smaller spaces than men. Citing a study by Eric Erickson, where a group of boys and girls were asked to construct a movie scene with props. The study showed that girls created smaller internal scenes, whereas the boys created wider outdoor scenes. Young argues that this is because women are typically only ever allowed to inhabit smaller spaces, which limits the perception of what they are physically capable of. In so many words, she's pointing out that in historically patriarchal societies, women's roles are in the home and have very strict physical boundaries, in addition to the psychological ones. The conclusions one could draw, though Young does not explicitly state this, is that women should either be given or take the psychological and physical space to express themselves at every opportunity. Purely from anecdotal evidence, most people can cite an example of when they or a woman they know was embarrassed or uncomfortable when asked to join in a physical task, largely because it is seen as not graceful or ladylike. One of the few times this constraint is lifted is when it comes to dancing. Dancing is an energising, enjoyable and freeing physical state, and yet, what's that famous phrase? Dance like nobody's watching? This is because men and women, 
but mostly women, must consciously disconnect from the judgmental eyes of society in order to maximise their physical space and their full range of movement. Which brings us back to John's. The video for Fatboy Slim's Weapon of Choice starred Christopher Walken dancing around the interior of a hotel late at night. The video won MTV and Grammy Awards, and from what I remember was played round the clock on most music channels. Its impact largely derived from the fact that firstly it was Christopher Walken in a music video and he's cool, and secondly a video of him dancing is even cooler. The finale where he leaps from a balcony and starts flying is the icing on the cool cool cake. Back then, this was all pretty unexpected. Something to note is that despite hearing a vacuum cleaner and seeing a cleaning cart at the beginning of the video, we never see that cleaner. The hotel is empty. No one is watching. The whole video relies on the premise of who, or rather what, we think of as Christopher Walken. Knowing his film roles as typically some sort of hard-nosed or maniacal mob boss villain type, Seeing him moving so freely and enjoying this freedom to dance was so utterly bizarre back in 2001, it became whatever the pre-social media equivalent of viral was. Famous, I think we used to call it. Some 15 years later, and John's returned with another equally surprising music video. This time, it was for a perfume ad and starred a then-unknown Margaret Qualley. It follows the same basic principles as Weapon of Choice – Someone dancing around a large, open, expensive-looking indoor space with unexpected acrobatics and flying abilities to finish. The reason that this had the same effect, despite being a decade and a half after Weapon of Choice, is because of the person we are focused on. A woman. In the same way we had expectations of who or what Christopher Walken was, or is, we have expectations of what a woman is allowed to do and what they're physically capable of, just like Marion Young suggested and this video takes great pains to both integrate and disabuse those perceptions. The video begins with Qualley's character excusing herself from a fancy after-dinner speech. In the same way we weren't expecting Walken to bust a groove back in 2001, we aren't expecting a clearly emotional Qualley to suddenly start pulling faces that Jim Carrey would be proud of. We see her sigh in ecstasy, scream in anger, and then, horror of all horrors, begin to kick out using a full range of movement. Despite her no doubt extremely expensive, beautiful and feminine green dress, it isn't restrictive, allowing her to be as spasmodic and flailing as she wants. Johns maximises this effect by using a low camera angle to capture Quali at full extension. Nothing about Quali's movements are graceful or dignified. When she stops to rest, her limbs immediately begin to flail and throughout the video her face is expressive and changing. That is until a moment when the music becomes sweet and angelic and Quali pirouettes elegantly like a ballerina, still at full extension. This seems to suggest, if that type of movement is allowed for women, why isn't the rest? It seems appropriate then that the one other person present in the video is a man who doesn't notice her. Quali gets his attention only to bring him to his knees and metaphorically destroy him, literally flexing her muscles as she does it. The icing on this cake is when we see Quali, and not a double, perform a front flip in heels, unaided, and then launch on a wire through the Kenzo logo. If that isn't remaining within the trappings of femininity while having the freedom to move, I don't know what is. The Kenzo video is specifically about subverting what Young described as limited motion. It upends what is expected of women's range of movement and expression, and how constraining that expectation is. It goes out of its way to present a woman using and achieving a wide spectrum of physical movements, facially or bodily, and it made all the more impact because of this. Again, it wouldn't have been so famously, allegedly, plagiarised had it not had that kind of impact. And it says a lot about what it achieved given how the alleged plagiariser is an active proponent of feminism and whose music is danced to by a lot of women and men across the world. Jump ahead two years and Johns does it again this time in an advert for Apple's Alexa wannabe The HomePod, starring dancer and singer FKA Twigs. The video again shows a woman existing in a world that literally and metaphorically restrains her. Twigs is seen hemmed in by people on a subway and an elevator. She then almost inaudibly asks people to let her through, and she's largely ignored. This, the video says, is everyday existence not just for a woman, but a woman of colour. That is, until she gets home. As we all do when we get home after a long day, she dumps her stuff and puts on some music to decompress. It is here that, similar to the Kenzo ad and the Weapon of Choice video, our protagonist, now unwatched, 
is able to free herself from the limiting perceptions of outside eyes and utilise a full range of movement. But this time, it adds another layer from Young's essay, the space she inhabits. Twiggs is at home, the limiting space, which is why it is such a surprise when Twiggs is able to manipulate and extend the space around her so that she is able to achieve her full range of movement. The space responds to her desire to extend and follows suit. Beyond this, the video further confronts the idea of perception by presenting Twig's character with a mirror halfway through. She actively dismisses it, upset at the reflection she sees, only to then accept the reflection and dance with it. The video is asking us to not only enjoy our movements, but enjoy ourselves within those movements too. This reaches its peak when Twig's transcends her space altogether and all walls are replaced by black space. At the end we see an exhausted but happy Twiggs relaxing on her sofa. Her ability to exercise her range of movement and the joy and relief that brings is Young's statement on exterior perception and its limiting effects in a nutshell. Luckily, this subversion is finally being seen outside Spike John's music videos. Today we are finally seeing female action heroes leading tentpole blockbusters. Atomic Blonde, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, and so on, These films are responding to a literal and metaphorical expanding of space for women in public life. While we are finally seeing more women in positions of power and represented in the media, we are also hearing more from women about their experience, a la the Me Too movement. It is also worth noting how this affects trans women too, and how alien the limiting perception of movement can be for them, when they might have previously been used to a more broad and flexible range of movement and expression. This dissonance can be seen in how Olympian Casta Semenya lost an appeal against the IAAF, who were instituting rules that say women with naturally high levels of testosterone must take a hormone-lowering medication to compete in women's Olympic fields. Movement to them, it seems, must always adhere to the correct gender. The expansion of space women and their experiences are allowed to occupy in public discourse is being reflected in the physical spaces women are occupying. Again, finally... But there is clearly still a lot of friction in what constitutes the correct amount of movement for women. While there is still a long way to go on the road to equality, it is small subversions and indeed extensions of this space, like in the videos of Spike Johns, that quite literally create elbow room for women to be better seen and heard. Today we learn that women are limited in their movement by perception, that Spike Johns uses music videos to express this, and that this expansion of range of movements is beneficial for everyone. And maybe let's stop using it just to sell stuff. Be sure to note this down in your exercise books, as these topics will come up again in later videos. Thanks for watching.